what's up guys? Ever since I was a kid, I have been obsessed with trains. Like, I probably came out of the womb with a conductor's hat and one of those wooden train whistles. Given that I already have a job, the likelihood of me driving a real train is pretty small. This is the next best thing. This is backyard railroading. These trains are usually an eighth scale. The tracks are seven and a half inches wide, which is plenty big enough to pull you, your family, and your friends around a track in your backyard or at a local club. Now, given that I haven't built like an actual f***ing steam engine that's powered off of coal and water, I thought that I would start with something a little bit smaller. So in this video, I'm just going to be building a simple flat car that'll get my toes wet in the hobby and I'll learn some things along the way. So buckle up, bitches, because we're about to achieve one of my childhood dreams, and that's backyard railroading. Let's go get building. The first thing I did was cut all the steel pieces for the frame. The spine of the car uses 1x2 rectangular tube, and the rest of the frame I just used 1x1 box tubing. Before I welded the frame together, I drilled holes for where the couplers would mount, as well as for the truck pin. I made sure to do this before welding the frame together, as it would be much harder to drill these holes with my drill press once the frame was assembled. I then mocked everything up to make sure my holes were in the correct location and everything looked reasonable. After I was happy with that, I tack welded the corners together and measured to make sure everything was square. I then welded my frame, making sure that everything stayed square and the frame didn't twist while it was all being welded together. I threw the trucks and couplers on it just for shits and giggles. This thing's starting to look like a rail car, but we got a lot more work to do. Once the frame was together, I was able to start working on the bolster. I found a piece of 8th inch scrap metal that would fit the bill. I measured the section of the trucks that needed to be supported and cut the bolster accordingly. I then marked the center, drilled the hole, checked to make sure the fit was approximately the right size, and welded it to the frame. The next thing I needed to do was cut out the profile for the sides of the car. You can see on the flat car I'm using for reference, the middle comes down closer to the track than outside by the couplers. To get this to look correct, I measured the profile on the HO scale car, I then scaled it up and drew it up in AutoCAD so I could plot the points used to draw my lines. The material I used for the sides of the car was 8th inch thick strap steel that was 4 inches wide. I plotted my lines on the material and cut the profile out with a death wheel on a grinder. These pieces then got welded onto the sides of the frame. This flat car is going to get a wood deck that sits flush with the top of the car, so I used a scrap piece of plywood to make sure the top of the steel was at the correct height. These side pieces not only add the profile, but they also add a substantial amount of strength. With just the tubing, this car would have definitely been able to flex or bend in the middle while carrying passengers or cargo. These profile pieces really made this thing beefy and strong. The next piece of the puzzle was to add the end pieces. Since the couplers had to mount through this piece, I needed to cut a hole for the coupler shank to pass through. To locate this hole, I clamped the piece on the end and used a scribe to trace the rectangular tube on the back of the material. I then used my mill to mill the hole where the coupler would go. After that, I welded the end piece on and checked to make sure the couplers moved freely. When I drilled the holes for the coupler bolts, I only drilled through one side of the tubing. Doing it this way, the bolt holds tension against the bottom of the tube. To keep the couplers from sliding out, I welded a nut into the bottom of the frame. If you do it this way, make sure when you weld the nut to the frame, you have the bolt installed, otherwise it has the potential to warp the nut and make it unusable. This kept me from having to through bolt the coupler, which would have been a pain in the ass to remove when the deck was installed, since a nut would have been located right under the plywood. Moving on to the final details. I wanted to put some stake pockets on the car so I had a way to tie stuff down. I found some of this 3 quarter by 1 inch C channel that will work perfectly. I just cut a bunch of pieces off and welded them onto the car. I decided to also make some steps. For this I just used 1 8 inch steel rod, bent them into shape, and welded them to the car body. I then ground down all the sharp edges and welded some attachment points for safety chains in case the coupler fails. Now we're on to paint. I painted the car using some tractor paint I got from the hardware store. I chose yellow because I was going to model a Union Pacific Roto Streamliners flat car. A little bit more on that later in the video. After it was painted, I found some scrap pieces of plywood and cut them into strips. The plywood I had laying around was a pretty bad shape. One of them was used to catch coolant from a leaking car. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the shades of different colors, but it ended up looking pretty cool, especially the blue from the antifreeze. The railroads would have used what they had laying around also, so I guess this is accurate. I screwed down the slats to the top of the car, test fit the couplers, installed the trucks, and called it a night. We got the flat car in the truck. I had to take the couplers off because it was just barely too long to get in the truck with the couplers on. But the cool thing is, is we have one more sleep until we get to play with choo-choos tomorrow. I'll see you assholes in the morning. All right, we made it. We're at the South Weaver Model Railroad. Behind me, you can see the loading tracks. So we'll get the flatbed on the tracks here and we'll go have some fun. The first problem I was going to need to address was not being able to load the car in and out of the truck by myself. Thankfully, the club president was here to help me get it on the tracks. I reinstalled the couplers, hooked it up to the work train, and gave this car its first run under its own wheels. This trip to the club track was my first experience with railroading in the 8th scale. 
I definitely had no idea what the f I was doing. Luckily, I've had a great mentor to help me learn what I need to build a successful flat car. Thanks for all your help, Steve. Back at the shop, I fixed the things that needed to be addressed. First thing to go was that yellow paint because it was f***ing obnoxious. Plus, I found many more examples of the car I was modeling in a red paint scheme, and I feel like it looks much better. The next thing I did was put a sealer on the wood to protect it a little bit. I plan to use this car to build my own railroad in my backyard, and though taking care of the deck isn't super critical, I think it ended up making it look better all around. The only thing I had left to fix was to add a fender wash under the truck so the car can negotiate less than perfect track a bit better. Then it was back out to the club for some more testing. All right, we are back. This is the second time we've had this car out, tested it. We've made our changes. I'm running solo today, so I've made this little ramp to help get the car in and out of my truck when I'm by myself. So we'll get the car on the tracks. We'll go pull the locomotive out of the shed. We're gonna be doing some track work today as well, so stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and get this car on the track. The ramp made getting this thing in and out of the truck so much easier. I installed the couplers, hooked it up to the work train, and set out again to do some more testing. I gotta say I'm pretty proud of this little flat car. Being my first project and build in the 8th scale, I can say for a fact that I'm glad I started my journey with a simple flat car rather than something larger and more complex like a locomotive. If you're considering getting into this hobby, a build like this was a fantastic starting point for me and I would recommend building something similar. This car worked great. The day I went down to the club to test, I also did some track work. Having the flat car there and having all the tools and supplies I needed readily available all while being able to move it around was a godsend. At the end of the day, a friend of mine that lived close by came down to the club and we had some fun putting this car through its paces and running it around the park a few times. I was pretty shocked how well it tracked. Being my first build, I was expecting to have it derail like hundreds and thousands of times, but this thing killed it. We derailed once, and I'm pretty sure that's because I was leaning over the side to get some good footage like an idiot, and that's what caused the derailment. Other than that, it was all smooth. Overall, this hobby is a blast and I can't wait to continue learning and building. It's much more involved compared to the smaller scales, like having to actually throw your switches and couple cars physically makes this hobby like 10 times more fun. All in all, I think this car cost me about $700 to build, the most expensive parts being the trucks. If you want to build this car or something similar, I'll be sure to upload my plans and put links to the parts I used in the description of this video. I'm currently working on designing and building a locomotive as well, an EMD GP40 for all the train nerds that are watching. If that's something you would like to see, hit subscribe so you can see that video when I publish it. I also have all kinds of other non-train related videos on my channel, so check those out as well. In the meantime, happy railroading, may your track work be straight and engage. for it.